And then it's, thank you, Shelly. And then it's just going to be a conversation. So please let me officially welcome you to the November conversation on trust. Our topic today is boost your business results with the foundation of trust. If you are not in the correct webinar or expected it to be something different, please let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, a few things as we get started. This conversation is being recorded and we will share the link to the recording with you, along with any resources that we think might be helpful at the end of the conversation. If you're willing to do it and in a place where you feel comfortable, please turn on your camera. With this small conversation format, it's really valuable for us to be able to see who we're talking with. And then as we go along, um, feel free to submit your questions anytime via the chat. If you think that you have something really pertinent to what's being discussed in the moment, raise your hand or just take yourself off mute and jump in. Most importantly, enjoy our time together, please. I'm looking forward to this conversation and hope you are as well. So for those of you who are new to Trusted Advisor Associates, uh, we're a boutique consulting firm who focuses 100% on trust. The firm was founded over 20 years ago by one of the co-authors of The Trusted Advisor, Charlie Green. Charlie went on to write another book called Trust-Based Selling and then co-authored The Trusted Advisor Field Book with a colleague of ours, Andrea Howe. I'm not stumping for you to go out and buy these books. I just want it to be clear that this is the body of work on which our conversations on trust are founded. So a lot of the concepts that we talk about can be found in one of these three books or even all three of them. And as I said, we focus exclusively on trust. Our job is helping people like you build the conversation, gain more awareness and bring out everything that you can to be trusted and trust trusting to others. So um, let's start off with this. Actually, let me go back. Let's start with introductions. I'm going to stop sharing the screen for a moment here. Uh, I've already mentioned I'm Noelle Michaelenko. I am the CEO of Trusted Advisor Associates. I took over when Charlie graciously uh, handed over the reins to the company when he retired during the pandemic a few years ago. I'm joined today by my co-host, Odie Parkins, the CEO of Four Trees Solutions. And Odie, by way of introduction, you come from a, a non-traditional background for most of our audience. Share a little bit about your background and your journey to thinking about trust as mm. a way to build business <laughs> results. Yeah, that that journey was the that was what led me to trusted advisor in the first place. You know, um, thank you for having me. My name's Odie Parkins. I am originally from West Virginia. Uh, I currently reside in Seattle, Washington. Uh, where I am the founder and a facilitator for Four Street Solutions, uh, a training company that I started myself after I left a long career of adult technical education. Um, my career started a long time ago. I was in a carpenter apprentice in the field. I grudgingly went into construction uh, after I left college in my home state and saw that uh, people were treated pretty poorly even in where I was. And I was actually one of the, one of the um, leader's sons and I was treated poorly. So I saw how bad it was. And then as I came up through the trade, uh, I found out the education wasn't there for me, the skills that I needed to be successful. So I threw my hat in the ring and I was given the reins to our apprenticeship program for the state. Uh, so at 26, I started closing schools and rebuilding curriculum and trying to build trust between employers who paid us to go work on their projects so that they had a little bit more trust in hiring us to come out and work on their on their jobs. I did wow. that for 10 years. Yeah. So, and then then so our I, before you go on, I just want to point out that you know something that really strikes me when you talk about your background is that you've been on kind of what, what what we could call both sides of the equation. 
-hmm. right? That you that you're a practitioner. You mm -hmm. also have a unique viewpoint from the leadership perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's it was really interesting. After I left there, I was a I was a um, a lead developer for the carpenters the carpenters union, an international union that covered all of North America. And I switched from technical training into professional and learning development. So leadership skills, leadership style, leadership uh, abilities and competencies, communication skills and mentoring, and everything changed. And I realized that people were trained very well with our tools and how we do our jobs. But once it comes to working with other people, it was pretty poor. And that accounted for a lot of the negativity, the acid, the um, the yelling, the shouting, the really acidic um, culture that you have on those construction sites. So when I left the Carpenters, my mission was to start my own training company where I could build better relationships between people who work together in the field, the leaders that lead those people in the field that may have never been given the opportunity to gain key skills in managing and leading other people. And that's what led me to uh, Fortree, or Fortree Solutions to Trusted Advisor. I was developing a retreat and it was to take construction leaders and help them recognize and understand how their trustworthiness impacts productivity, relationships, and you know effectiveness on the job. Yeah, I, I have to say, Odie, when you first reached out, you and, and your partner, John, mm -hmm. uh, when you first reached out about using our trust quotient self-assessment, I was a little bit leery. It it took me a few, it, it took us probably a few conversations to mm -hmm. really get comfortable with how that would apply in the construction industry, right? I mean, I, I remember saying, trust me, <laughs> it's, it's going to work. Yeah. Um, you know, you said that you start off with a question when you talk to people that, that really mm -hmm. brings it foundationally home to them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and share this slide again, because this is the question that we want to ask you all on this call. Odie, I'll turn it over to you to ask the yeah. question. It's your question. So in a, in a work relationship, where does where does trust begin for you specifically? Take a second and think about that. Now, feel free to come off mute. And... Come off mute or throw it in the chat. We're going to have to call on people. I'm going to reach back to my time as a professor here. So Feroz, when you think about trust in your work relationships, where does it begin? I think so in every aspect of the conversation or the relationship, you know, you basically have to uh, be sincere in your intent, number one. I think so it begins with intent, number one. Okay. And, and, uh, and then living up to what you've said. So, uh, uh, I, to me, it's 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 the the intent and, and and living up to it is kind of just a simplistic way of lo looking at it. Yeah, I I love those that that you highlight those two aspects, and you know I think it's it's simple. I don't know that it's simplistic. It's so simple. It's so straightforward. It only takes a few things for us, if I'm hearing you correctly. For you to begin trusting someone, mm -hmm. right. um, Edwin, I see you're in here. Don't be shy. Will you come off mute and share where you see trust begins in your work relationships? Sure. I am. Uh, um, hello, everybody. I'm. Um, I'm questioning myself about this because I believe that that trust now and then comes up uh, even before you are face to face with anybody uh, because uh, they can see your credentials and that uh, kind of uh, uh, um, creates a, a certain expectation. If you know that this person ha ha has had that experience doing certain work or uh, um, uh, has had um, 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 these many years 
or has been part of my industry or uh, that, that kind of things create a relationship even before you're even in front of a, an individual. I think that that can be destroyed in five minutes, but uh, is the, the entry point of, uh, of that trust, I believe. Nice. So the, the entry point for you is the, is the credibility, what mm -hmm. they see even before they know you, what they can just discern about you from knowing your background, your education, um, the experience that you have in your industry. Yes. And actually, you know, uh, sometimes uh, throwing uh, credentials up front uh, is the classic way. Um, however, uh, sharing what you have done for others right. that can relate to what these other individual or the person that you're about to engage uh, uh, care for. I think that that might be way even more effective than uh, uh, just credentials. Yeah, what you're getting at is this idea that that they need to be able to relate to what you're saying. It's not enough for you just objectively to have solid credentials. They need to see that those credentials are beneficial as it relates to them. Right? Yeah, he's back on mute. Yes. Good. Thank you. I love that. Lindsay. All right, I'm on mute again. Hello, all. I think uh, it begins at the immediate point of communication. Uh, mm -hmm. I say that as a consultant because I talk to a lot of people on the phone, through email, meetings like these, and from the moment we start sharing a work conversation, uh, the way that they respond, their body language, um, how they interpret their roles, Mm -hmm. All is where I begin, where I can understand how they feel about a project or about people that they work with. I mean, you can glean a lot of information from people without knowing too much about how long they've been for an organization or, you know, their exact role. So it's more about how each person, for me, how they communicate and interpret their role in an organization or on a project. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It's, it, you know, Odie, I kind of feel like we're in a, a little bit of a Goldilocks situation here, right? We've got everything from it's before I've even met the person to it really happens as we lean into that conversation to look, what really matters is, is their intent and are they following through? Can I rely on them? Can I depend on mm -hmm. them for things? Right. What do you think about these perspectives, Odie? You know, I think I think the really the really key thing that came up here is it's different. It's different for everybody. Everybody, and you know what you call work is different for everyone. You know, the, my my industry that I work with is it's, it's heavy heavy construction and industry. And you know, you walk onto that job, you are literally trusting your life to the people around you. And I remember that, that like when I was an apprentice, I was standing 200 feet up on a, up on a Capitol dome with a crane that had an air conditioning unit. And I had two pillars that I had to fly an air conditioning unit in. And I had two inches on either side. And the journeyman that had been teaching me handed me a, a white glove. It's the one that I still keep here, this white glove. He handed me that white glove. This was 25 years ago. And he said, you're flying it in. And, and I said, what does that mean? He said, that white glove means that I say it's okay, that I trust you. And that means that you only exist in that person's eyes down there, that they, they will not trust anyone but you. And that white glove means that everybody else on this job is trusting their life with you because you're flying something over their head. And it got real it got real, real quick. And, you know, realizing that how we approach work in teams and how we approach relationships is really different based on the work we do, the backgrounds we have. And that conversation where everybody had a different take is so important. If you get a bunch of people together and they all realize that we look at it completely differently, that's where learning can start. 
So say a little bit more about that, right? I, I mean, again, you know, your your background is non-traditional for us, a company that primarily works with trusted advisors right. who are consultants or financial advisors. Um, when you think about trust as a foundation, what does that mean? You know, trust is a foundation. I, I trust is foundational to every relationship at work. I mean, it's either there or it's not. And that's, that's a thing. It's a, it's a reality. And I believe that, you know, coming from my non-traditional, you know, it's, there's a lot of trust bantied about out on our construction sites, but I have spent better part of 20 years teaching communication skills and leadership styles, transformational leadership, collaborative leadership. What is transactional leadership? And ultimately it doesn't matter. What matters is you can be a transactional leader. And if your people trust you and respect you, then you're, you're going to do well. It do, it's not just because it's, it's not a bad system. It's just used improperly. If you can be a transformational leader and, a, and an uplifting leader and your people will not trust you and you're not going to get anything done. Trust matters regardless of leadership style, regardless of workplace culture regardless of organizational chaos that occurs in every organization, pockets of trust in working teams can exist and it all exudes from that center leader. So, and that's how we drive productivity. Yeah, so so when you say that to me, it, it makes me think about the fact that it, it doesn't matter if it's a construction company or a consulting company, mm -hmm. right? Everybody in the workplace seems to be on this this mission to find the right method or process, the right style of leadership. What's our culture look like? What do we need to say about our organization? What do we <laughs> say we care about? What are our values? And that takes up so much energy. And what I'm hearing from you is that trust really cuts through all of that. Yeah. Stop it. Just yeah. stop. It's not about the employers. Problem, about employers the spend hundreds of thousands of dollars per year to try to move the needle. And what really would matter, what could make the difference is a little bit of humanity. So that leads me to a really good question. Well, that really good answer leads me to another question is what I should say. Why does it matter? Right. We've got culture. We have processes. We have policies. We have everything should be laid out. And, and even thinking about your your construction industry, where the safety of each other, not in a big ass OSHA safety way, but right. where our personal safety and security are dependent on the people with whom we work. Why aren't processes enough? And what does it matter? Like what's at stake if we don't have trust? Yeah. I mean, you know, trust degrades. De I mean, it just degrades relationships if it's not there. I mean, even it's not... It's not like we're trusting these people uh, that we work with, with our utmost secrets or anything. It's a, it's a different type, right? I mean, it's, it's it has about physicality. It has about, you know, getting to go home and see your kids at the end of the day. And you trust that everybody is going to have their eyes open and, and be watching for everyone and do their job effectively. Unfortunately, you know, what happens is the people that are in the companies making decisions for Maybe the workplace, you know, in the industry that I use, that I work in, the people that are making the decisions are not standing where the people that are doing the work are. They are not one of those. They are not of that culture. So they don't understand necessarily that humanity can lend itself to productivity and efficiency. It's technical prowess only goes so far. How you use it together starts to matter. And when we get you know, me as a consultant, when I left the Carpenters Union, my mission was to help people have better days at their job. And I know it's a nasty, acidic industry. And to bring employers and workers together and help them understand that something as simple as developing trust can make a dent in their profit and their safety and their culture. You may not have to change anything. You may just need to do something a little bit better. And in our world, trust is visible. It's just like that 
that white glove meant everything. So when I talk about trust in our industries, we're talking about how can you embody behaviors that people can see from across the job site? How do you, how do you meet somebody when they enter your team and ensure that they know that you're right on with them and they're not going to get crap. They're not going to get, they're not going to get uh, any, any nonsense from you that you're serious. You're there for them. You care. And we're all going home at the end of the day. It's more than just safety. It's, it's how we behave and how we speak. So that's a, that's a really interesting way to look at it. How do you see trust? What comes up in your conversations when you talk about making trust visible? You know, up on the mountain, and I say on the mountain, uh, my retreat, which is called the Leader Circle, is up on top. It's about 8,000 feet up in the Nevada mountains, and we bring construction professionals from all over all over the world to, to those, and we have small conversations about trust and values. And one of the key walkaways that I had, we have people from the field and we have people from the office. So we have both, both sides out there trying to figure out how to work together. And we show pictures. I hold a picture up and it has a, 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 a superintendent holding a set of keys out, smiling. And it says, here's your set of keys. Be here on time. And we talk because there's no PowerPoints. There's, there's no power. There's nothing. We just talk. And the people from the field say, we know exactly what just happened right there. And the people from the office say, what? And the people from the field say, that person just made it on the team. They were just welcomed. They were just given a modicum of trust because they were welcomed with that key. You only get that if they trust you. And the people in the, from the office went, we have seen that dozens and dozens of times and never realized that that was truly happening. Tiny, wow. tiny things make a difference in how people understand relationships. Yeah, and it's it's more than that too, though. It, one of the things that I'm hearing in, in that example in particular is the importance of being willing to extend trust. Mm. And recognize it in yeah. different ways. You know, that's one of the real values is part of that conversation. We all see trust different. We all recognize its beginning at a different point. But ultimately, you know, we're all trying to just pull the rope together and we speak different languages. It's not different than, you know, Mars and Venus and love languages. We speak different languages of trust and being able to open that aperture and step back and go, I can now see, I can now see that this is happening around me so I can lean into it. it changes everything. You know, you... When we've talked about this in the past, Odie, you, you've used some pretty lofty language around the benefits of trust. You've talked about how um, your productivity and your profit are impacted. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to how businesses operate, where it's all about the numbers, it's about the amount of time that you're working on something, it's about the materials that you're using. How do you translate this, I want people to go home not having had a terrible day into profit and productivity? Or how does the lack of trust inhibit profit and productivity? Yeah. I can talk to an employer and say, when, what's, have you worked in the field? And they, if they say yes, I say, what's it like out there? And they're like, it's rough. It's, mm -hmm. it's harsh. Like, how's it feel? Kind of sucks kind of beat you down. And so when you're feeling that way, how do you work? Just enough. And when you work for someone that you trust and the team gets along and that person meets you at the gate and says, you know what? You killed it today. Thanks for a great day. What are you going to do tomorrow? You're going to come back like, and kill it again. Like, fine, fine. It's tr And it's true. It sounds silly, but it's true. When people, when people enjoy themselves, they get along with the people that they work with and they can turn their back without fear. They're going to do better work yeah. and they're going to have higher loyalty to their team, higher loyalty to their leader and higher loyalty to their employer. It's not a huge investment to trust people to do their best and 
if you're going to do that, just let them trust each other. It It's really, really basic, but it is absent. Teams, okay. teams do things to the detriment of other teams to try to protect themselves in cultures that are harsh and confrontational. And construction is not the only one like that. Kind of sounds like, like that. It's just sometimes. a little bit more in your face. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all, we all have those moments when we, we, we just feel that, that very natural urge of self-protection, right? Whereas mm -hmm. safety on Maslow's hierarchy, I think is number one mm -hmm. pinnacle. So, so it's, it's definitely. Uh, if safety's on the bottom of the hierarchy, so it's the foundation of the relationship hierarchy. Right. Yeah. Just well, is. We are running out of time. I want to give our guests an opportunity. Edwin and Feroz, what questions do you have about trust as a foundation? And Lindsay, sorry. Not really a question, but uh, you know, particularly in, in, in times where you tr trust is easy, is easier to come across when you're in, a, in, in direct contact or direct communication. Mm -hmm. But at times when you are not, whether it's a phone call or whether it's a Zoom call where it's not face-to-face, -face, where it's not person-to-person, -person, how does trust, how do you build trust so easily? Right. <laughs> that, unfortunately, that's that's the topic for another two-hour yeah. webinar. Uh, yeah. um, um, what, Odie, top of mind, one or two quick tips for Feroz. You know, and we we do talk about that in our retreat. It's like, how, how do you make... Most people are not trying to be untrustworthy. They just are doing it in a way that is comfortable for them and they're not realizing. So that first conversation of everybody sees it differently, try to wrap your responses that, in ways that, that really um, bring out all four dimensions. You know, it's spend some time thinking about how you speak, get up every morning. And this is what we talk to them up on the mountain. How can I speak with intimacy? How can I speak and change my words to change my orientation? Because a lot of it's just habit. You may, you may say one thing and think something very differently, and you may care very, very deeply and just be a rude jerk with what comes out of your mouth. So spend some time thinking. I resemble that sometimes. <laughs> so I heard I heard a couple of things. One is intentionality mm -hmm. there, really increasing self-awareness and being intentional. And the other is, um, the again, that visibility, the audibility, mm -hmm. making sure that it's demonstrated. That, and it kind of links back to Faraz, what you said at the beginning about um, understanding someone's intentions. How do you know what their intentions are if you haven't had a chance to, to encounter them? Mm -hmm. How do people know what our intentions are? We can share them. We can be more mm -hmm. intentional about it. I just yep. use that too much. Like be, be clear. Yeah. No, be you. Edwin, comments or questions as we wrap up? You're on mute. I have so many and trying to distill that into to something uh, uh, more specific, but um, I think that uh, well, uh, for some of us, uh, I know that I'm not alone. We have been, uh, we made it to where we are in our career because we did certain things in a certain way. And in my case, I I work on the sales side for a long time. And uh, um, then you get used to speak in a certain way. And that certain way, it sounds salesy. And, mm -hmm. and people can feel it. And um, um, I'm having a hard time turning that, especially in internal conversations we are having in my organization, where a lot of people has been exposed to the trust advisor um, a, a, a plan and book. We all get the book when we join the, the organization. I read the book. I listened to almost the entire book too. And uh, it's easy for me to get, especially under pressure, to get back into salesy mode. And that kind of add a gloss 
a disgusting gloss to whatever message I am trying to convey because it seems like he is, uh, as somebody said to me recently, it sounds like a line you already have in your back pocket. I'm mm -hmm. trying to overcome uh, that uh, a way to, to communicate or to explain in some cases difficult situations uh, with and at the same time, keep a balance. I represent a team of uh, 40 individuals in my team. And now and then I know more about what's happening behind the scenes. But uh, trying to bring that back, it comes across like I'm trying to be just defensive or just, you know, uh, covering up for something. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying hard to, to, to build this uh, 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 new way to speak. But um, um, sometimes I feel like I'm just not saying enough mm. and just taking whatever is being presented to me because I'm now I'm fear of coming across like too defensive. So that shift, besides reading the book, besides listening to the book, do you have any, any uh, other advice that I should take in? I've got a quick one, Odie, unless you want to jump in. I got some too, but you go first. All right. Um, I think there's a really simple thing that you can do, and that is to before responding, just take a pause and acknowledge what you heard the person say, right? So if it's if they're asking you a question, if they're challenging you on something, sometimes the reason people think that we sound slick and over-rehearsed is because we, we fail to acknowledge what I heard you ask is, or I'm hearing a concern on your part of, X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. pause so they can like make sure that you heard what they're really asking first. Sometimes that's all it takes for them to say, oh, you really are listening to me. So the next thing out of your mouth is not going to be some line that you've just pulled out of your back pocket, right? Something out of mm -hmm. your repertoire. Yeah. Thank you. Odie, you want to? Yeah. And I would, the, the pause and restating restating what you just heard so it sounds like that so that they are sure that you are focused in on them and that you're getting everything um another thing that we that we really encourage with with our population that I work with are trust partners and uh we one of our exercises is we do a one sheet they they have to dig through their their profile assessment and pull information out of it and then tell another person about what they learned about themselves. And so they, they will literally say, Hey, this went really wrong the other day. I'm going to pick up my trust partner and say, this went really, really bad. And here's what I said. And they've been through the program together and they've built a lot of intimacy and they can be really blunt and firm with each other. And you know, because ultimately we come from cultures, whether it's not your geographic or your ethnic culture, it's like your workplace culture. And for, I go back to mine, mine is harsh. You get one word answers and they're usually pretty short and terse. And that's just how I do it until I talk to somebody and they say, hey, you sound like a jerk. Mm -hmm. And I go, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Let me go back and try that again sometime. So find it, find somebody that you trust that you can work with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get that objective perspective. Absolutely. Hey, yeah. we are out of time. And I just realized I've actually let us go over because I, I'm loving this conversation. Sorry about that. Um, that's okay. Open up the chat. I, I'm just curious. What's your biggest takeaway from this? And then while you're doing that, we've got a little poll that will pop up. I just love your feedback if this was a helpful use of your time. Shelly, can you get that poll launched? Hmm. Oh, that's not the right poll, but that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. We'll just cancel that one. So I, I would love to hear though, your um, your biggest takeaways. And with that, I'm happy to stay on a couple of minutes extra. Odie, I don't know if you have a hard stop. Mm -hmm. I can stay. 
Yeah, I'm happy to stay if you want to continue the conversation. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you at our next conversation on trust. Thanks. Bye for us. Thank you.